Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Simple Mods video. So I've been playing with a lot of handhelds lately. It's always been one of my favorite form factors to play games on, no matter how powerful of a PC I have or high res, super fast refresh rate monitor, always turn to these handhelds in the end. In fact, handhelds have been the only devices I've been playing games on pretty much this entire year, mainly on my Steam Deck, and now I've been playing with the GPD Win 4 over the last couple of weeks as well. I've been very excited about this unit since ordering it from their Indiegogo campaign. I simply love the look and smaller form factor compared to the Steam Deck. Plus I couldn't let go of the PSP nostalgia as it just looks like a bigger version of the original PSP. I love this thing. It also features the AMD Ryzen 7 6800U APU with the 680M graphics. It's a little bit faster than the Steam Deck at higher wattages, but then you do lose on battery life. So it's a little bit of a compromise there. Anyways, this won't be a review or a performance testing video or anything like that. However, what I'm going to show you is how I upgraded this 512GB model to a 4TB internal SSD. And the SSD of choice is the 4TB Crucial P3 Plus, which is one of the best value M.2 storage drives I could find at this capacity. It's going to be a huge upgrade and what's great about the GPD Win 4 is that it takes full size 2280 M.2 SSDs, unlike the Steam Deck. So you have a ton of options to choose from. While I opened up the device, I also fiddled with the cooling and improved it quite a bit by adding some extra thermal pads and changing the thermal paste on the APU. I was able to drop from like 77 to 78 degrees Celsius to a very stable 67 degrees at 28 watts of power. And I even pushed it as far as like 35 watts on the APU. And I still only got around 69 degrees while gaming and the unit is quieter as well. So you won't really be pushing this beyond 28 watts as you do get diminishing returns at higher wattages. It's just great to see that the cooling system is able to handle it, however. And here's the device along with my custom PSPs that I shell swapped and my slim PS Vita. Love these things. Anyways, the first thing to do is take a hairdryer um, to the bottom of the unit in order to remove this covered piece. I'm hiding two of the screws that allow you to get inside the unit. So you can try to pry this off without heating it up first. However, you do risk damaging or even breaking the cover piece um, in the process. GPD do include another one in the box uh, just for this reason. But then again, it's only one replacement and maybe you'll want to open up your device more than once like me. For example, I'll probably open it up again to do the um, uh, firmware update on the uh, display to get the proper refresh rate. But anyway, so you don't want to keep replacing these covers, um, so it's not an ideal solution. However, with a hairdryer, as you can see, I was able to remove it very easily with no damage and I also got it back in the end as well. So once you're done with that, you want to remove the other six screws found at the back of the unit. And uh, I'm using my case here to lay it flat and protect the screen and thumbsticks while I work on it. But you'll see I resort to just lying it flat on top of a microfiber cloth in the end and uh, work on it this way. So to get the back cover off, I tried the prying it with a plastic clip. However, I wasn't sure exactly where to pry the unit open from and I didn't want to damage it with the plastic clip. So in the end, I managed to simply pull and take it off with my hand. Just be careful with the cable for the two back buttons and the Wi-Fi antenna. You don't have to remove these cables. However, for ease of working on the unit, I chose to remove them. Once you're inside, the first thing you'll have to do is remove the fan unit. This only has two screws, one connector and the piece of thermal tape at the top, which you'll want to peel off carefully so you can reuse it. I'm also taking out the three screws found underneath the fan, which will allow you to remove the first part of the heatsink. And this allows you to access the battery connector. So if you're just wanting to upgrade the M.2 SSD, then you can already go ahead and do that from here, just as you would on a normal PC. But before you do that, it's also a good idea to disconnect the battery um, just with this cable clip right here. Continuing on, I'll go ahead and remove the current M.2 as well as the other three remaining screws holding on the heatsink. You'll see once the heatsink is off, my unit didn't have such a great thermal paste application. So after cleaning off the old thermal paste, the first thing I did was add a thermal pad on these modules here. And that's the weird thing, as I saw other GPD Win4 disassembly videos and they already had a pad here, but mine didn't even though the cooler is designed to cool those modules as well, so it wasn't really making contact with anything. So the thermal pads I'm using are the Gelid Ultimate 1.5mm thick, and here I'm just testing the cooler to see if it will still fit properly with the added thermal pads, as it did seem a bit thick, so I'd say maybe the 1mm thermal pads from Gelid may work even better, but the 1.5mm are the ones I could get at the time. Still, the 1.5mm works just fine after testing. I then also replaced the thermal pad under the first part of the heatsink and then finally I'm applying some new Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste. 
I see people recommending the Noctra MTH2 thermal paste. I couldn't get it at the time, but I can confirm uh, with the temperatures in my testing that the Thermal Grizzly uh, also does a great job as well. So once the heating is back on, I then go ahead and replace the M.2 SSD with the new 4TB Crucial P3 Plus drive. Don't forget to reconnect the battery after this before adding back the second part of the heatsink. And you'll want to push the screw hole underneath the other heatsink um, here in this top right corner as such, and then put the three screws back in to hold on the entire heatsink assembly. When you're happy with that, go ahead and add the fan back on and don't forget to reconnect it and reseal the top piece of tape once you're done. So here's a new M.2 SSD installed and you can see the thermal pads as well. Once you're happy and have double checked everything, all you have to do is just put the back cover on, which goes on very smoothly. And at this point, I'll also turn on the unit to double check it's all good before continuing. And once you're happy with that, add the cover piece back on uh, at the bottom of the unit as well. I recommend reheating the tape um, for a few seconds just to help it adhere better um, on contact and then just run your finger over it for a few seconds. In the end, it should look like it was never touched. And congratulations, you're done. From here, all you have to do is install your Windows operating system as you would on any other PC. You can get the latest drivers from the GPD website and you'll be back up and running in no time. So I hope you enjoyed this video on my channel. I'll most likely do more handheld videos in the future as I absolutely love these devices, like I keep saying. Um, but also custom builds are here to stay as well, so that's not going to change. But as far as the lack of videos lately, I'll have more in the next month that I've worked on. But lately, life has been a bit full on for me. I'm just always busy with something. So in my spare time, I've just been relaxing and enjoying uh, playing some games on these handhelds instead. So I do have a full-time job on top of this channel and all the builds I work on. Um, I do need a proper break at this point, so I'll be back in the second half of the year with more content, uh, probably around August. But uh, in the meantime, do stay tuned as I do have a few more videos coming up this month and later in June that I have banked. And also, before we wrap things up, if you're here for the GPD Win 4 and wondering what else I did to my unit, first up, I'm running this Nintendo Switch Lite case uh, from TomTok which fits the unit great. I believe I saw someone on Reddit recommending it and I always loved the TomTok cases. You will need the thicker version of this case as there are two available for the Switch Lite. Here's the slimmer version that I use for my Ein Odin handheld, which doesn't fit the GPD-14 as you can see. But the thicker version is probably the best available case for the GPD-14 at the moment. It, it fits it really, really well in my opinion. Other than that, I have an anti-glare screen protector on, which I always loved on these handhelds. I don't mind the matte look of the screen, and I don't think it impacts on colors at all, but I get that anti-glare may not be for everyone. Still, you can get different style screen protectors for the GBD Win 4 uh, from viascreens.com. Just keep in mind, given the curves on the edge of the screen, the protector will not cover those areas, but still, I find it gives it great coverage. I then added these thumbstick caps, which are from Skull & Co. They're for the Nintendo Switch as well, but they work perfectly on the GPD-14. And finally, on the back, I have one of these slim kickstands uh, you can get from Amazon. They're not the best or super strong, but I wanted something slim, and it seems to work well for my use, although I may replace it in the future. And that's about it. Check out the video description for links to everything and some more resources on the GPD-14. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!